So, amen. Well, uh, I want to... I want to dig in. I don't want to. I want to. I just want to knock the rust off of a topic tonight. We're going to continue, and tonight is will be the. I'm going to land this plane tonight on walking by faith. And uh, I, I know people are saying, "Yeah, right," <clears throat> but I am going to land the plane. And uh, because I want to knock some rust off of a topic, and I want to talk about fear tonight. Walking by faith requires us to deal with fear, and I want to. I don't, I don't want to go deep into this tonight because I've got a series coming. As I began to prepare for this message, I really felt like that uh, I need to do a more in-depth study of this on Sunday mornings uh, for people. Uh, so we're going to just knock the rest off, brush the plate, just clean the plate off a little bit. Uh, we're going to see where we're going. Uh, and, and like I said, most of you have heard some of these things. But let's go to Matthew chapter 8. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8 together tonight. And let's start here in verse 23. Real quick, uh, it says this. Now, when he got into a boat, <clears throat> his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. <clears throat> then he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? And he rose, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Now, notice he says, Why are you fearful? Why are you disregarding your faith and why are you fearful? Why, are you, uh, why aren't you leaning in? This is what he's saying. Why aren't you leaning into your faith? Why are you leaning into the voice of fear and not the voice of faith? You know, <clears throat> I started doing a little research here, and it was uh, in Mark 4, it's the same instance of this or the same story, and it, the disciples came to him and said, Don't you care? Don't you care? That we're perishing. Don't you care? See, whenever fear comes, it always makes us question the character of God. Whenever fear starts to come, it always gets us to get our eyes off of the goodness of God and question his character. That's what it's trying to do. Trying to think that well, he's, he's abandoning me. He's left me, right? Do you not care? That we're perishing. So faith or fear wants to erode our confidence in the promises of God. Let me say that again. Faith or fear wants to erode away the confidence we have in God and his promises. So that's, that's the goal of fear. It's trying to get you captive, trying to take you captive. And we have to realize that. At one time or another, every one of us has had to deal with fear in some form. We're not immune to it. Everybody in this room has dealt with fear and will deal with fear. It will come at you. It will come at us all, right? And, and however, however it presents itself, fear has the ability to shut us down uh, and paralyze us. It, it, it keeps us from moving forward. And it causes us to make unwise choices, unwise decisions. People are making fear-based decisions all the time. I mean, we got, we got fear about our kids, right? We don't want our kids to be made fun of at school. And we go and begin to go, next thing you know, you go and you start spending all this money to get them to stay up with the Joneses. And it's all fear-based decisions. Hello, I don't know why I'm going there. So, so the enemy is trying to get us to make fear-based decisions and not fear of uh, not faith-based decisions if we're going to walk by faith right walking by what we trust what our confidence um uh, you know uh, uh walking by our beliefs walking by our persuasion we're going to have to deal with with fear and fear manifests itself in many different ways and listen it is the probably the uh, a number one cause of dysfunction in our society now, I'm going to stay away from it because I will dig more into this in the next couple of weeks in June when I start this series on fear and, and anxiety and worry and all these things. Uh, but it is, it is causing problems today in homes and, and, and people everywhere. And, and with the pandemic that came with, one thing that came with the pandemic, not only was a virus release, it was also there was a heightened, now there's a heightened sense of fear that's in people's lives. I'm seeing it every day. And if we don't watch out, the vo we'll lean into the voice of fear and not the voice of faith. Can I get a good amen here? Amen. So <clears throat> we can't tolerate fear. 
Isaiah 41, 10. I love this. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you by the right hand of my righteousness. I love that scripture. It says what? What was the first two words? Fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. For I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. Child, you are mine. Though I'll walk through the waters, I will be there and through the flames. Right? That is a good one. We have to deal with, listen, fear can't be tolerated in our lives. <clears throat> it can't be tolerated in our lives. We, ha- we, we hear it over and over in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, to fear not or don't be afraid. It occurs 103 times in the King James Version Bible, to fear not or don't be afraid. Now, that's a huge deal. So, if the Bible tells us not to fear, there is, number one, there's an opportunity for us to fear. <laughs> if it's telling us to fear not, right, it's, there's an opportunity for us to fear. But also, if it tells us to fear not, there's also a grace that's available for us to not to do that. There's a grace that's available. And if we're going to walk by faith, I'm going to have to deal with with fear. Jesus said in John 14, 27, I'm just, again, we're just knocking the rest off of this topic. <clears throat> he said, uh, he said, my peace, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Listen to this in the Passion. I love this. This is John 14, 27 in the Passion. I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Amen. Check this out. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but, by, but my perfect peace. Now listen to what he says. This is how uh, Brian Simmons translates it. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. Don't yield to fear. And that's what I hope to get across to in this next little bit. How do we not yield to fear? How do we not yield to fear? So let me ask you a question. Is fear an enemy? Is fear an enemy? Well, this is a trick question because it's yes and no. If someone swerves into your lane, right, while you're driving, there's going to be a natural fear that's going to come. And that's a good fear. If there's a poisonous snake, right, in the path, right? I can remember, I think I maybe told this story, but it was back last fall, and it was still a little, it was starting to get chilly, and we were, we were running the trails up in Eleanor, and, and I remember I come around the turn, and there was a big old black snake right in the middle of the path. I sound like a girl. I jumped about that high. But what happened was fear, there was a good fear that came that caused me to respond to remove me out of danger. Okay, so... God has given us the emotion of fear as a way to address things with urgency. This is the good fear, okay? But what we're talking about is a fear that rules. It's a foreboding, a dread, a gloom. That's what, when Paul writes in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God's not given us the what? The spirit of fear. The attitude. That word spirit, is, it's an attitude, It's like school spirit. That word spirit there means it's kind of like school spirit. It's something that can get on you. It's something that 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 if you're around it, it can glat it can latch on to you and it begins to cause you to do stuff that you never thought you'd do. Take your shirt off, men. Take your shirt off and paint your bodies up. (laughs) Right? School spirit, but what I'm saying is, is that it's, it's, it's something that con- that's contagious and infiltrates us and drives us. And people can be gripped by fear. Now, I've been teaching and we've been teaching over 11, 12 weeks about faith. Why? I, I want us to realize, I want us, to, I want us, I want our training to kick in. Listen, I hope that you guys just wouldn't come here and just listen to me preach and never put any of this to, to work. I want our training to kick in. So when fear comes, I want you to recognize what it is, and I want us to deal with it. I want our training to kick in. 
I want, man, when that 98 mile an hour fastball is coming down the pike, that it's not about me. It's just reaction because I've done it so many times. That's all. I've just done it so many times. Boom. It's just over and over. And we hear, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it again, and it gets in you. That way, your response to this stuff, man, it comes out automatically. Amen. Let's go over to Mark chapter 5. You guys all right? Can I get a good amen here? Mark chapter 5. Look here. I want to walk out what I believe. Boy, isn't that the, it, that, that's where the rubber hits the road. And that's the hard part, isn't it? It's easy to preach. It's, it's a little hard to walk it. Look what he says here. Now, this is the story of Jairus, right? Uh, the story of the woman with the issue of blood comes in, touches. Remember Jairus, the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, he came, this, uh, this religious uh, man came to Jesus and said, listen, my daughter is, is sick, ready to die, right? And, and all of a sudden he says, I'll go with you. Remember that story? And all of a sudden that woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, that whole great story, right? But let's pick it up here in verse 35. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Those are words being spoken. Right? Look what it says. And as soon as Jesus heard the word, it says what? As soon. As soon. Because he knew he had to get another. He had to get another word in there. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only what? Do do not be afraid, only believe. The choice, the choice now is to walk in faith or in fear. And faith is not the absence of fear. Faith is doing it in the spite of fear. Right? I mean, listen, whatever comes after our butt has the most influence. Let me say that again. Whatever comes after my butt. I know God can, but the, what's following now is what the most powerful influence actually in our lives is. Right? I, I want us to understand something. I have a choice. It, faith is not the absence of fear. You can have fear all around you. You have fear trying to come on you. But I got, he said, hold on. What's he say? He said, he heard the word. All of a sudden, Jesus, I got to deal with that right now. I got to get it. I got to get another word in here. He said, no, don't be afraid. Only what? Believe. Amen. Only believe. I need you to believe in this moment. So fear tolerated is faith contaminated. So when we make a choice to operate, see, see, when we make a choice to operate, not by our emotions, but our faith, that's maturity. Let me dig here a second. So many of us are being controlled by our emotions. I want to dig here. I felt, I felt grace on this as I was studying this today. So many of us are being controlled by our emotions. We're emotional roller coasters. And it's destroying our faith. Our confidence in God. Remember what the Apostle Paul said. We walk by faith and not by what? Not by sight. So I'm walking by what I believe. I, I'll, I'll dig here a little bit a little further as I show you something about Jesus but, but the thing is, is that my choice is either to reverence fear, to honor fear, or to honor my faith and to honor God. The word fear here, actually, it can also mean to be in all of. To be in all of. He said, don't be afraid, only believe. Don't honor the fear, honor me. Don't honor the, 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 the anxiety that you have. Don't honor that. Don't be, all of, don't be in all of that. Be in all of me and who I am. We got to make a big deal about God in our lives. We got to make God big in our lives again. This is how we're going to deal with faith. So don't reverence fear. Don't be in awe of fear. So I have a choice of what I'm going to partner with. Uh, like the virus, right? We've been talking about this virus for a year. But the virus needs a host. Without a host, it can't live. Are, are you. Whatever I'm, I don't want to host fear. 
I want to host faith. I want to host, I want to host faith. I, I, want, I don't want to host my, I don't want to host fear. So, 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 so fear needs a host. Faith needs a host. I found this, uh, uh, this anonymous quote. Both faith and fear sail into the harbor of our minds, but only faith should be allowed to anchor. I like that. Let me say this again. Both faith and fear sail into the harbor of, your, of our mind, but only faith should be allowed to anchor. So I have a choice of what I'm leaning into. Okay. Faith comes by hearing and what? Hearing by the what? Fear comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of the enemy, the, the word of the circumstance. Faith and fear operate the same way. Because fear is the faith of the devil. See, anytime Jesus, anytime Jesus is ruling, there's peace. Why? Because Jesus is full of peace. But any time that fear is ruling, we know where it's coming from because the devil's full of fear. We know where it's coming from. Now, I'm talking about this unhealthy fear. I'm talking about this thing that grips a hold of us and it destroys dreams. It keeps people in, uh, uh, not pursuing the, the dreams of their heart, keeping people uh, in bondage, paralyzed, right? I mean, I was recently told by somebody just, just, uh, just had been during this whole pandemic and everything, but I was told personally, they said, you, you got to pray for me. I, I'm having a lot of social anxiety. I'm having a problem. This, ain't the, this, ain't, this has pr been proven. I just read some stuff just recently about our children and, and the effects it's just had. It's on our kids. We're going to have to learn to deal with this. We've got to learn to teach this to our children again. We've got to, knock, we've got to knock, knock the rust off of this stuff again. Because listen here, the enemy can get a foothold with fear. Listen, he will paralyze us. You guys all right? Yeah. Amen. I have a choice of what I partner with. Psalm 31 verses 13 and 14. Real quick here on the screen. For I, for I hear the slander of many. Fear is on every side. While they take counsel together against me, they scheme to take away my life. Verse 14, look what he says, but, oh, but, see, whatever follows my but has the most influence, right? But as for me, fear is all around, but as for me, I'm trusting in the Lord. But as for me, you are my God. I'm saying you're my God, Right? I'm going to answer my fear with faith. I'm going to answer fear with what I believe, my convictions, my persuasions. I'm going to answer it. Man, I'm telling you, you've got to open up your mouth and speak something out of your mouth. When you're going through a rough, rough time, stand up and start speaking. Amen. You guys all right. Hallelujah. So we all have to deal with it one time or the other. But our response determines whether we're going to be bullied by it or we're going to conquer it. And I don't know about you, I come from experience in this. Listen, I, I was tired of being bullied by fear. He showed up and he took my lunch money way too many times. And I finally got bold enough and I smacked him in the mouth. Come on. You guys are all right. So fear, fear. So what is fear? It's a painful emotion caused by an expectation of evil. It's an uneasiness of mind upon the thought of future evil. I, I want to read this to you because I had this down. Um, fear always gives us a negative view of the future. Faith always gives us a positive view of the future. Amen. 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 So fear causes dread and anxiety in our soul. Now, anytime fear shows up, bondage shows up. Romans 8, 15 says this, For you have not received, now we're just going to look at a couple of scriptures. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to what? I just want you to see here. We could talk about this scripture and break it down. 
I just want you to see anytime fear is around, bondage is there. The purpose of fear is to take us in bondage, to take us captive. So when fear comes, its goal is to take you and I captive. I need you to remember this. Whenever fear comes, its goal is to take you captive. That's what he wants. When fear comes knocking, he's coming to get you in bondage and to enslave you. Now, check this one out, Isaiah 54, 14. Again, just giving you a few things. In righteousness, uh, this is after the, the 24th chapter of Isaiah, follows the 20, 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And the 53rd chapter of Isaiah is about the suffering servant. You know, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. We're talking about Jesus on the cross, you know, paying the price for our freedom, right? So 54 is the celebration of what happened in 53. It says, in righteousness, you shall be established. Notice what it says right here. You shall be far from what? Oppression, for you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. This is the celebration of Isaiah 53. And the Bible says in Isaiah 54 that we're celebrating what happened in 53, that you and I can be established in our right standing. Our, we're right with God. We're, in, we're righteous, right? And you know what? Oppression and fear will be far from us. So notice, no, notice though, that, that, that oppression, fear, fear and oppression are connected. You see this. What is oppression? The exercise of power in a burdensome, cruel, or unjust manner. The feeling of being heavily burdened, mentally or physically by troubles, adverse conditions, or anxiety. That is the, 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 the Webster's Dictionary uh, 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 definition of what oppression is. He said, oppression, fear, and oppression are connected. The reason is you won't be in oppression is because you won't fear. Because why? You're the rights of God in Christ Jesus. It's a celebration. Jesus come to set you and I free from fear. Fear's job is to oppress and take us into bondage. That's why the Bible is so adamant about it. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Why? Because it's, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Amen. Amen. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 2. I want you to see this one. Hebrews, I want you, if you got your Bible, I'd love for you to turn there. If not, you can see it on the screen. But I really want you to see it. I want you to lay your eyes on it. You may want to take a little bit of note right here. Isaiah chapter 2, uh, I'm not, not Isaiah, Hebrews, sorry, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Talking about Jesus here, inasmuch then as, chil as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. So Jesus became a man, took on flesh and blood. Now notice why. That through death he might destroy him, who had the power of death, that is the devil. And release those who through what? The fear of death were all their lifetime subject to what? Jesus came to deliver you and I from the fear of death. Every fear is rooted in the fear of death. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid, let's say, you, say I'm afraid of spiders. You're not afraid of the spider. You're afraid of the spider bite that could kill you. Am I making sense here? Every fear is rooted in the fear of death. And Jesus didn't just come to take away the fear of a spider. He actually came to the root of it, cut the root off, and said, listen, I'm coming to deal with the root, which is the fear of death. Because listen, I got, this is the lie of, of, of the fear. Listen, this is the lie. You're going to die. You're never going to die. If you are a believer, you will never, ever, ever, ever die. You will never lay in a casket. You won't. You. You. I didn't say your body. I said you. The real you. The real you. You'll never lay in a casket. Jesus said, listen, I am the resurrection, man, I feel this. I am the resurrection and I am the light. He that believes in me shall never die. Amen. You'll never die. 
I'll lay, my, I'll lay the tent down, but I ain't ever dying. I done all the dying I was going to do. But prior to January 31st, 1997, I done all the dying. When I got there, I stepped from death unto life. Are you guys with me here? It's the root of all fear. The lie of the fear of death is you're going to die. You're never going to experience death as a believer, ever. You won't. Because why? You got immortality when you came to Jesus. Check what Paul told Tim. Check out what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1:10. But but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. When I received the gospel and I received Jesus Christ, immortality was given to me. I'm never going to die. That's good gospel news. That causes people to be able to live in faith. We could go a long time into that. So I want you to see here, when fear shows up, it's coming to take you in bondage. And all the fear is rooted in the fear of death, which Jesus came to deal with when he died, was buried, resurrected. Amen. Why was Jesus given a name above every name? You know why that was? He resurrected. He was the, and and actually Hebrews talks about, he's the first man to be raised. All, every, listen, when, when we're going to, when we die, my, my spirit's going to be with Jesus. But there's coming a day that Jesus is going to return and the resurrection will happen. The, 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 your body that's been in a ground, listen, the DNA that's in there, it's going to get, give, be given life and your body will be raised and your spirit and your body be reconnected again and you're going to be, live forever with Jesus in a brand new body. Just like Jesus' body. He was the first one. He was the first fruits. The Bible says, among many brethren. The first fruit from the dead. That's why he, listen, that's why we can believe in Jesus. Without the resurrection, our faith is, 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 is empty. He was, he's alive. Man, well, I can walk by faith now. I don't have to walk in fear anymore. I don't have to bite on the, it's coming. It's around me. But as for me, I want to trust in the Lord. You guys all right? Now, so how to walk by faith in a fear-driven world? Real quick, let me give you just a few things. How to walk by faith in a fear-driven world? Number one, you got to know this. You got to know our peace is a target. If, 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 you, if we don't know, peace is a precious commodity. Not many, listen, a lot of people never know what peace is. They never live a day in peace. But that shouldn't be the testimony of a believer. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Or peace I give to you. My peace. I'm giving you my peace. My gift. It's a gift I'm going to give you. Not like the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Why? Because you got peace. You got storm sleep in peace. Right? You got storm sleep and peace on the inside of you. That's good gospel news. But if I, listen, if I don't know the precious commodity I have, I won't protect it. What's the point, Pastor? This is the point. I want you to understand when fear is attacking, it's trying to take away your peace. It really can't take it away because it already belongs to you. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit. It's not like that peace comes and goes. It comes and goes in our soul because we let other things come in and block the light, right? Shade it. But peace belongs to us. It's, it, we have it. If, you, if not, get born again. And you get the gift of peace. Man, I'm telling you one thing. If there's one thing that I thank God for, it's peace. How about you? When you have something valuable, you pay attention to protecting it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So my faith hinges on me hearing, right? My faith, my belief, my persuasion, my conviction, it comes by hearing. Guess what happens when you have no peace? 
when, when the enemy comes in and starts, starts trying to mess with your peace, your hearing gets dulled. When you're in chaos and confusion, you can't hear from the Lord. And the enemy knows that. It's the chatterbox. It's the chatterbox. Right? Be a, listen, when in our world, this is, I want to say this to you. Be aware of your emotional circuits. Okay? Be aware of your emotional circuits. Be aware of your gauges. Stay aware of your gauges. And when you start feeling fear come on you, be aware and be keenly aware of it. Know your emotional circuits. See, let me get, there is a thing in your brain called the amygdala. And the amygdala responsibility is to release endorphins into your body. It's there. What happens? The amygdala receives information from the brain, and the brain says, Oh, no, you need to be scared about that. Okay? Oh, you need to be scared. And the thing about the amygdala, it doesn't know any difference, whether it's reality or non-reality. All right? Because you can, you can picture, right? You, you could actually get scared of a bear, that a bear's not actually there. Oh, come on. Or the boogeyman. Or you're walking. Or you're running and it's dark. And a shadow, cat, you catch the shadow when you're running or walking or whatever. The next thing you know, your amygdala starts to fire up. And what starts to happen is it begins to release Chemicals into your body that causes the fight, fight, flee, or freeze mechanism. It's a mechanism actually to keep you safe because there is a good fear. But again, it don't know the difference. Only thing it knows is the brain saying, you've got a problem. Something's wrong. You need to fear. Now, you've got to be aware of what's going on in you. So know our peace is a target. Number two, this is how we're going to do this. Submit our fears to God. Submit our fears to the Lord. Fear is something we all encounter, and it's okay. I want to give everybody permission in this room to go to your father and talk about your fear. I, 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 I get it. What are you supposed to talk about Go to your dad and say, Father, I'm fearful about this. What's going on? Can you help me? I, I want to I wanna talk to my dad about it. And there's no shame about that. No shame and no condemnation. Just talk to him about the fears you encounter. Listen, you need to encounter, you need to look your fear in the eye. You need to acknowledge it. Why? I mean, there's, there's a psychological part of this. There's a chemical, a biochemical. Because when you sit and you face your fear, it actually begins to feed information to your amygdala and it will actually cause it to calm down. Most people never want to look at their fear. This is how you set people free in their minds too. People start dealing with issues, past hurts, past pains, stuff that's happened in their past. I tell people all the time, go to your past and look that thing in the eye. I don't care how painful it is, go look at it in, your, in, the, in the eye. Because why? I'm going to deal with it. Jesus said, when you face your mountain, you speak to your mountain. Face your fear. Face it. I'm feeling these things. No judgment, no criticism against yourself. You're actually causing your body to face the fears, and it actually will position you to begin to draw upon your training, right? And you'll move from a, into a victorious mindset. You'll move from a victim mentality, you'll move, and you'll move yourself right over into a victorious mindset. Now, I want you to know something. Jesus encountered fear. I want to show you. I don't want to go too deep. You'll have to find this one for me. It's Luke 22. Luke chapter 22, I'll, I'll go over here real quick. <clears throat> Luke chapter 22, and this is, this is the Lord, um, I think it's verse 44. 
Now look at this. Luke twenty two forty four. I want to show you this. Jesus experienced fear. And being in agony. Now stop right here. The word agony there means great stress and fear. You say, well, Jesus? Well, yeah. He, he was a, he's a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We never have Jesus in fear ever until right here. Right before he goes to the cross. He prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down the ground. Do you know that's, a, that's an actual, uh, it's called hematidrosis. That a person can be under so much stress and pressure and anxiety that, that the blood, the, cap, the, the, the capillaries, the blood capillaries will begin to burst and it mix and mingles with the sweat. Hematidrosis is what it's called. Jesus is experiencing fear. But he says, right? He, if you read on in Luke 22, what's the next words that Jesus starts saying? Father, if it's your will, take what? Take this cup away from me. But what? Not what? Not my will, but your will be done. Jesus is saying, I'm afraid, Father. I want this cup to pass for me. Uh, he's going to his dad. Can we see this? He's going to his father. And he's experiencing the pressure and the stress and the anxiety of the moment. The enemy was coming at him. He said, Father, I, I'm afraid right now. I'm afraid. But not my will. But yours be done. I, Jesus was saying, I'm, I know that I'm feeling the emotion of fear, but I'm going to do your will. This is what it means. When Jesus was saying that, he's saying, my feelings are not my master. You're my master. I choose. What's he saying? I choose to walk by the word. I choose to walk by the way of God and the plan of God and not what my feelings say. And not by what my emotions say. Because if we don't watch out, you'll be driven by your emotions. Check this out. Your feelings and emotions are real, but, is it, but it doesn't mean they are right. <coughs> your feelings and emotions are real, but it doesn't mean they're right. Why? Why? This is very important because fear comes to get you, to, remember now, it gives you a, a, a negative view of the future in order for us to make decisions on fear-based, a fear-based decision. I can't walk, listen, if you are walking by fear and you're trying to make decisions, stop. Let me help you. If, if you can't, if you're walking in fear and it's gripped your heart, don't make a decision. Find somebody that will speak to you. <coughs> that will walk you off the ledge. There's no condemnation. We've all been here. That's why you need someone around you. Your feelings and emotions are real, but it doesn't mean they're right. <clears throat> Amen. Jesus faced his fears. Right? He was in great agony. Great stress. And the word, one of the words used for here is, is anxiety. Great fear. But he said, I'm not going to walk by what I feel. I'm walking by your word, not my will. But yours be done. And it becomes a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. 
This is in, in, in Psalm 16, verse 8. Check this out. This is, if you would read this at the top of your Bible, if you have like little, uh, you know, where it would say, you know, certain things, this is this, this set of scriptures about this. It's talking about the Messiah's victory on the cross. He talks about you won't leave your, your servant in Sheol. His body won't see corruption. Now look, look at this is all about what kept Jesus doing what he was going to do. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Jesus is saying, I'm feeling this. If it's impossible, let this cup pass from me. He said, nevertheless, I feel it, it's real, but not my will. I'm not going to be moved. You guys all right? Jesus faced his fears. And guess what the first words were after his resurrection? First words after the resurrection. Well, except for to, to Mary, outside of Mary. But when he showed himself to all the boys... Now they said these things, and now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and he said to them, peace to you. Jesus faced his fear, and it released peace. <clears throat> Submit our fears to God. The third thing is this, remind ourselves of God's love and care. This is how you're going to walk it out, walk him by faith. This is how you do this i got to remind myself of God's love and God's care. He's, he's, he's helping me. 1 John 4, 8. You got 4, 18, I think it is. 1 John 4, 18. Yeah. <clears throat> there is no fear in love. Right? But perfect love cast out what? Because fear involves what? Here we go again, right? Bondage, torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Has not had mature, has not matured in love. I have to believe in God's care and God's concern for me. I got to remind myself of his goodness. Lord, don't you care? The first thing the enemy wants you to do is to lay blame on the Lord and say, Don't you care? Don't you see? Don't you understand? Right? No, no, no. I'm reminding myself of his goodness. All the time reminding myself, yea, Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. I got to remind myself, he's with me. Even in my pain, he's with me. You have to believe it. Even in grief, God's with you. You have to believe he's grieving beside of you. He's walking beside of you. He cries beside of you. Many times God does not deliver us out of stuff. He delivers us through it. He delivers us with it. In the middle of it, he's right there. And I have to remind myself, if not, fear will grip me. Paralyze me. Take me in bondage and oppress me and torment me. And the final thing is this. We face reality with God. Fear is reality minus God. Faith is reality plus God. Fear is reality minus God. Faith is reality plus God. I'm going to face it with God. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this. How big is our God? Come on. How big's your God? How big's the devil? How big's the mountain? How big's God? Right? Remember those 12 spies that went out? Remember that? Over there in Numbers, the 13th chapter, all 10 of them come back, right, with the negative report. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb said, no, 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 don't. And their words, what's interesting about that story? Their words permeated inside the camp of the Israelites. They all started hearing the words of doubt and unbelief and fear. And it actually infiltrated and began to be like a cancer throughout the whole camp. 
And Joshua and Caleb said, hold on, stop, stop, stop. Don't, no, no, no. We're well able to take the land. We're well able. Our God is with us. Whew. I'm reminding myself about how when, when you're in the middle of a situation, it could be waiting for you out the door. It may be wait, it'd be right now, uh, just inside of your mind, a voice. You gotta remind, I gotta remind ourselves, I got I, I'm facing reality. But I'm not facing reality alone. I'm facing reality with God. I'm not without God and without hope. Hallelujah. You guys all right? So all of a sudden I move now from a victim to a victor. Listen. I, I'm going to say something to you. You're only a victim for a moment. You're only a victim for a moment. One moment. You can be a victim for a moment. But after that, you have to make a decision. Am I going to remain a victim or am I going to be a victor? And there's people all the time. They live in with victimization and they're a victim from things that's happened. I get it. You've been hurt. I understand all that. But you and I have to make a decision where I'm going to live. Which land am I going to live in? Victim land or victor land? Hallelujah. You know what fear wants to present to you all the time? What if? Isn't that what it says? Well, what if your kid's teeth are crooked? What if? What if their, their teeth are crooked and they get to school and they're made? What if? What if? What if? What if? What if? What if? What if that, what if that thing's a tumor? What if that thing's a cancer? What if that thing is that heart problem? What if? What if? What if you're never going to get a job? What if you're never going to come out of the problem? That's what fear does. But you're not, you, it's only you don't face reality. I'm facing reality, but I got God on my side. So this is where I'm ending. Listen to me now. You know what it means when I got God on my side? That means, you know, I got some weaponry on my side. That means I got a voice and I can speak for God. I got authority and I've got faith and I got worship and I got some stuff, man. I listen, I'm not a victim. I'm only a, I'm only a victim for a moment, but I choose to move into a victor mindset, a victorious mindset with God, speaking my faith, speaking to my mountains, letting the, talking to fear and say, you're not having any place here. Amen. Pray, speak to your mountain. Answer fear with a confession of faith. Worship in the face of it all. Remind ourselves of God's promises. What am I agreeing with? Now, yes, how we're going to, this is how we're going to do this in real time. You say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm going to tell you the greatest thing. Let me tell you the greatest thing. Fear, I'm done. Fear always tries to get us to focus on the unknowns. Does it not? <clears throat> That's why the amygdala gets fired up because it's looking for something it can get its handles on. Remember the, remember the, remember the, the fear? Well, we just, re, just recently, the fear of the, of, of the gasoline shortage. I mean, we saw some of the crazy stuff, people putting gas in bags. Are we really that dumb in our society. Sorry. Maybe, I hope you didn't do that. <laughs> if there is, there's deliverance for you tonight, okay? We're going to cast the spirit of stupid right out of you. <laughs> Sorry. I just know in West Virginia, whether well, it was happened there, but not here. But what it is, is, is that fear, it, your amygdala, your brain is trying to find a handle and try to get in control. And if it can find control, Right? It finds equilibrium. The brain hates to see you like a cat being tossed out a window. And that's what's trying to happen. Now, do you understand? What was the deal about the toilet paper? No, no, no. It, what it was, it was something I could control. It's something I could get my hands on. I could do something. There's a lot of things you can do, but it was what it was. This is the point. It always gets you to focus on the unknowns. When in Christ, we win. God's with me. I have promises. 
So I get focused on the promises of God and who he is. And man, it brings handles. And and it brings peace. And it starts to calm down my amygdala. I mean, the word of God will do that for us. And it begins to go. And you guys, I mean... I mean, Justin probably could speak to all this. I mean, he's a counselor. I mean, he probably could just talk about all this stuff. But I'm just telling you, we're never, we face reality with God. I'd hate to be facing our world without God. But you're not. You've got God on your side. Therefore, when Jesus said, peace I give you, the gift of my peace I'm giving you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Don't let your heart be troubled and don't let it be afraid. You face reality with God. And with God, all things are possible. And He's your God. And you got a bag of promises right there. Pick up your Bible, find a promise, hook your eyeballs on that thing, and let that thing speak to you. Raise your hands in worship. There's something you can do. You can participate. When it's coming, you don't, you don't, your hands aren't tied. You got God. You got prayer. You got a voice. You got weapons. You got friends. Amen. Are you guys all right? Yes. So that's how we're going to lock this out. So in a couple weeks, in a few weeks, I don't know whenever we get over there in June, I'm going to launch a series and we'll dig deeper. I really want to look at what Jesus has done for us on the cross. I'm mean, going we'll to talk about worry and anxiety. I just feel like, and we may even repeat some of this stuff at, at times, but I just feel like there's more people, not, not that you guys are not important, I just feel like that there's more people that need to hear this in right now in this season. And uh, so we'll launch in there and dig a little deeper in a few weeks. You guys stand to your feet. I'm done. Praise the Lord.